Good afternoon, y'all. This is Anthony Glenn checking in with the Sit Rare Podcast, where we help you win in real estate. And today, we are going to be talking with Ian Jensen about the Loan Estimate Explained. What's up, Ian? How you doing, bro? Hey, Tony. Yeah. Cost at closing. Cost at closing. Loan costs. Loan costs. Cost at closing. Cost at closing. Loan costs. Cost at closing. Loan costs. And the third. Cost at closing. Loan costs. Cost at closing. Loan costs. Cost at closing. Loan fees. Close. <laughs> Pause. Section A, Section A, Section Alpha, yeah. Section Anthony, knock, knock. Section Amazing. A is the part that is very, very important, Ian. Why? Please pay attention. Please pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Call, calling all consumers. <laughs> Please pay attention to Section Alpha. A, Alpha. Ding, 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 ding. No. <laughs> Listen to us because take, this take happens so many times. Can you say that one more time for the people in the back? Do not change your financial picture during your loan application. Period. Good afternoon, y'all. This is Anthony Glenn checking in with the Sit Rep Podcast where we help you win in real estate. And today, we are going to be talking with Ian Jensen about the Loan Estimate Explain. What's up, Ian? How you doing, bro? Hey, Tony. Good to be here, sir. Outstanding. Guess what, y'all? Tomorrow is the Marine Corps birthday. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. <laughs> Man. It's a big day for us tomorrow. This is where the, the Marine Corps celebrates their, uh, their the, the founding. The inception. The inception of the United States Marine Corps. The, right. the world's finest fighting force on the planet. No greater friend, no worse enemy. And uh, sure. I had the privilege of serving at MCRD San Diego uh, for some time where I trained civilians into Marines. And it was a really good time. And then also I was at 1st Radio Battalion, um, Secret Squirrels. And that's where that's I right. met good old Ian Jensen, Tech Sergeant Ian Jensen. That's right. This guy. <laughs> so let's get right into it, man. So today we're going to be talking about the loan estimate and all of the components of a loan estimate. So let's get right into it. Ian. What's up? What is what the got? loan estimate and why is it important? Uh, okay. So loan estimates are really good documents. So what it does is it lays out all the different fees and situations that are, it's kind of like the receipt of your more of your mortgage loan that you get from your uh, loan officer. So what it does, it lays out all the fees, all the timelines, all your interest rates, um, and the data was generated, stuff like that. So that way you can follow it and have all the information you need in one sh in one place. It's a three page document, but it's a really it's a really dense piece of information because you get a lot of um, you get all the information you could want out of that one document. Got you. And and then um, can you can you break it down? Like why is it important, and when do clients get actually get it? Okay, so it's really important. So um, don't don't get this confused. It's not the same as your closing disclosure. Your loan estimate is not the same as your closing disclosure. Just so you're all tracking, the loan estimate comes out about like uh, they have to do it at least three days after you complete your application with your lender, and then after that it comes out and it teaches you, or excuse me, it shows you all the different details of that particular loan that you're applying for. So the loan estimate was created by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau um, after the aftermath of 2008 in the mortgage crisis. Mm -hmm. What did it actually replace? It replaced the good faith estimate, which had a lot less parameters around it. So they had reworked the whole thing. So that was a much more um, restrictive and accurate document for the consumer. So now there's 10 essential pieces to the loan estimate, right? And it's typically three pages. Yes, so what are the first? We're going to break it down into, you know, micro bites so you guys could understand it. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the first three things? Okay, so the first three things that I would say are the most important would be, it says right at the top right where it says, save this document and compare it to your loan disclosure. So your loan disclosure is different than your loan estimate. So we'll talk about that more later. And then there's the date it comes out, which is the date issued, which is right on the top left. And then there's the, the payment type, which states whether or not it's a 15-year or 30-year mortgage. So basically like the loan term, the terms of the loan, essentially. Correct, yes. So if it's a, a adjustable rate mortgage, 30-year fix, 15-year fix, and that's what that goes over. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the next, uh, the next three things are the product type, the loan type, and the loan terms. Can you unpack that? Okay. So the product type is the one that states whether it's an ARM, whether it's a um, adjustable, whether it's an ARM, which is an adjustable rate mortgage, a fixed rate mortgage. So that's a product type. The loan term 
is what states the duration of that mortgage. It could either be a 15 year mortgage or a 30 year mortgage are your most common mortgages. So, so we've talked about, we talked about the, the product, the loan type and uh, uh, loan terms. Now, um, what are the, the, the last three things? Okay. The loan estimate. So uh, next piece will be the origination fees. And these are like underwriting or um, the generation fees that you'll have to pay. Those are something that you really want to take a look at. It's on section A alpha of the loan estimate. Pause. Section A, section A, section alpha, yeah. section Anthony, knock, knock. section amazing. A is the part that is very, very important in why? Please pay attention. Please, pay attention. Please pay attention. Pay attention. Call, calling all consumers. <laughs> Please pay attention to Section Alpha. A, Alpha. Um, so, no, this is the one that's the origination fees. This is one where it can get really messy because if it's not um, done by somebody with the highest of, of integrity, mm -hmm. this is where they can bury a lot of fees. So it's something you really want to take a look at. And if you do shop around, you want to compare this particular section significantly. Okay, so, all right, so 10 most important details from each page of the loan estimate. Number one, save this loan estimate to compare to your closing disclosure. Number two is the date issued. Number three is loan term. Number four is product type. Number five is loan type. Number six is loan terms. Number seven is cost at closing. Number eight is loan cost. And number nine is calculating the cash to close. And the 10th and final thing on the top 10 things to look at on a loan estimate is what, Ian? It is the annual percentage interest rate. Okay, and why is that important? Because it compares what you're, actu what you're paying actually every single year versus what it is on the document. It's, it what? sounds confusing, but they're two different numbers. The, Bro, what are you talking the about, interest man? rate you'll get on the first section of the... Mm -hmm of the loan estimate, but your annual percentage interest rate shows kind of basically your realistic percentage interest rate as you go year over year. So Ian, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. When are you supposed to receive the loan estimate? Okay, your loan estimate has to come to you from the lender within three days of completing your application. And listeners, everybody, if you don't receive it within those three days, that lender could be subject to fines. Wow, that's crazy. So, so basically, the loan application triggers the three-day rule. Absolutely. And typically, what do people do with the loan estimate after they get it? What does that What does that allow them to do? So, technically speaking, once you get your loan estimate, you could go shopping around for a better rate if you go out to you know because that's like you said, that's your quote from the the lenders. You know, that's the same as getting a quote for like getting your concrete done at your house, right? You could take that around and mm -hmm. compare it to other different lenders around there to see how you could shop the best rate and get the best deal. Outstanding. So, so essentially this is a process. Okay. I fill out all of my paperwork, right? Correct. Um, I do the loan application. I provide my supporting documentation. Once I give my supporting documentation guys, because they can't give you a correct loan estimate if they don't have all of your paperwork, say all with me. All, all of your paperwork. All of your paperwork needs to be turned in. And I'm joking, y'all. <laughs> but the reason why this is important is because the lender has a, a good, thorough financial picture of what your uh, situation looks like so they can actually work through. So technically, a loan officer is kind of like a, a counselor, okay? Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you, um, what you need to do in order to get most good lenders will tell you what you need to do in order to get a better interest rate. And then also that loan estimate, you'll be able to see all of the breakdown in the fees. And did mm. you have anything else to add to that? Yeah. The loan officer can be a really great, uh, really great resource when you have credit issues like that. Cause that's something that we do all the time is that we culture that person to make sure that they, if they're not in the best situation, they teach you X, Y, and Z so that you can be in the most advantageous position possible. So that way you can, afford the best loan. Gotcha. That makes sense. Now there's basic information on a loan estimate, like your name, your social, mm -hmm. the address that you're financing, mm -hmm. the value of the property and the loan amount that you're requesting. I have another question for you. When is the loan estimate binding? Okay. So the loan estimate is binding only on the day it was issued. Things change with the markets every single day. 
So mortgage rates change every single day. So it's only good for that particular day. So if you like it, act quick. So because everything changes all the time. Uh, it's all reflected based on market conditions. So if market conditions change, it, it changes the whole picture. So they have to rework the numbers. And rates, closing costs and terms could change, right? Absolutely. Okay. All right. That makes sense. What also, what's something else that could change the loan estimate? So a loan estimate could change regarding your own personal situation. So ding, you, ding, 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 ding. No. <laughs> Check. Listen to us because Take, this happens so many times. Can you say that one more time for the people in the back? Do not change your financial picture during your loan application. Period. That is correct. Now, when you guys go out there and you want to get that llama cover couch that you always wanted from AFES, or you wanted to get that, you know, that that nice, I don't know what it is, but for some reason. Yeah, the Range Rover. <laughs> yeah, any, mm -hmm. anytime somebody is buying a property, they want to go get that Bentley Coupe, man, mm -hmm. or that Bentley Cullinan after getting that $300,000 mm -hmm. property, all right? The $40,000 alpaca rug. <laughs> <laughs> Do not go out and start buying stuff. When you're buying a property, do not eat bread and, and drink water until yeah. you actually close. Because guess what? One late payment could change everything. One little small thing can change everything in your financial picture once you once you actually start the finance process. And follow the direction of your loan officer because, and that's even regarding to paying off your debt as well because that can change your financial picture also. So make don't do anything different. Like whatever you were doing the last six months, keep it up as long as it's on like your best behavior as far as the your credit is concerned. And also, guess what, y'all? Don't be a secret borrower, please. So when you're doing a bar, when you're doing uh, when you're borrowing or you're mm -hmm. going through the home buyer's process and you use your credit card, you need to disclose it to your loan officer so they can get ahead of it because they don't mm -hmm. know. Because guess what? They're going to pull your credit before you close escrow. So if you use your credit cards, guess what? You're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crazy. It happens because they do a soft pull the day of you close. So if anything has changed, then they're going to see it as like a quick, the bank is always going to make sure that they are secured at every phase. So they're going to check you again the day you close to make sure that nothing changed or you didn't go out and buy you know, the, uh, what was it, llama covered? The llama covered couch. Llama covered couch. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to go out and check you again to make sure that you're good to go. So don't do anything crazy. Follow the, follow the advice of your professional at all costs. Don't think you know better. Always check with them until you close. And go do crazy stuff if you want. But hey, it's on you at that point. Now, hey, th hey, guys, we also got three things that you should know. Three solid things that you should know with the loan estimate. I'm going to go over the first one and Ian's going to cover. The lender cannot change their fees at all after disclosing them mm -hmm. unless there are value changes of circumstances. These include origination fees, transfer taxes. If the fees do not change, the lender must pay the difference. So... The second thing that you need to know is the 10% tolerance rule. Ian, can you cover that? Yes. Okay. So if any of the fees have changed 10% or more from your initial loan estimate, then the lender is responsible to pay the difference. So that's a 10% change or greater. The lender is responsible for paying those fees out of their pocket. Now, and the last and final one where there's zero tolerance these costs mm -hmm. typically include homeowner's insurance and regular property taxes on your home. However, if the lender picks the title company or attorney, they are subject to the 10% tolerance rule. Now, the meat and potatoes, baby, let's get to it. Loan estimate and loan disclosure. Let's sure. duke it out or closing disclosure. Correct. What is the essential difference? So the... Loan estimate comes out, like we talked about before, about three days after you have submitted your application, whereas the closing disclosure is the final receipt. So estimate versus closing disclosure. So the estimate is, like it says, an estimate. That's good. And then the closing disclosure is the final forms that everything else will be account be accountable for and disclosing all of your fees and, and everything correct yeah it is the legal final receipt from the lender disclosing your fees with that loan 
Okay, now, and a good way to put it, just remember this, okay, because, you know, I'm a little slow, all right? I'm a little, you know, <laughs> hey, <laughs> sometimes I'm an SAT waiver, guys, so, you know, mm -hmm. you got to explain things a little bit. Loan estimate is estimated fees that could change. Closing disclosure typically disclosing is something disclosing your what your fees, fees are, fees. okay? <laughs> Say it with me now. Disclosing your fees. <laughs> Good. And I'll, and I'll read this to you guys. The closing disclosure represents the final terms of the mortgage you're about to take out. Mm -hmm. The format is similar to the loan estimate form, except the figures are no longer estimates. The lender verifies all of these closing costs from third parties like title insurance, attorney fees, appraisal invoices, the prorations for property taxes, homeowners insurance, and prepaid interest and are all finalized based on closing date. The closing disclosure, however, also comes with its own three-day rule. You must receive a copy at least three business days before actual closing. Business Man. days. Business days. Business days. So that means if you get it on Friday, you it can still reevaluate that until Tuesday. They close the business on Tuesday. It's good information to know. Yes, well, this has been really good. Uh, today we went over 10 essential things within the closing disclosure. Section A, where all of the fees are at, which is really, really, mm -hmm. really good. And we went over the loan estimate versus the loan disclosure. Any save rounds, Ian? Uh, be great. Keep on winning out there, but make sure you don't get your credit right. <laughs> Everyone tries to play games, but get your credit right, get your money right, and you'll be good and follow the advice of your professional. And then this is uh, one thing that I definitely will tell you. Most lenders do have an opportunity to do a rapid rescore and a what if scenario. The rapid rescore is essentially designed to uh, rapid rescore your credit uh, because credit usually reports every 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. And the um, what if scenario is a document that basically tells you down to the dollar, if you pay this down, this can increase your credit or improve your credit to this position. Most major lending institutions don't do that. But if you ask for it um, and you sit down with someone uh, like people that we work with, they'll be able to do that for you. That way you don't get a no and you get a roadmap in order to increase your options for getting uh, a better interest rate and a better uh, financial situation. Man, this has been outstanding. And we got breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. The Win in Real Estate and Sit Rep Podcast has released our Wire mentoring and coaching platform for real estate professionals. Ian, can you talk about the Brand Ambassador course? Hey, all right. The Brand Ambassador course. That is a great, 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 great course that we put together all that goes through all the different little nitty gritty details about the veteran or excuse me about the VA loan so that way you can learn everything that you want about it if you're a real estate professional it puts you right in track to be able to represent these veterans to your best abilities and then make sure that they are maximizing the opportunities of that loan as well as it gives you access to the network that we built through accredited veteran uh veteran advocates to make sure that we are serving the community as best as possible. Okay. And a cliff note of that is that if you're a real estate professional and you want to learn how to increase your VA business and get referrals from us out of our Facebook group and from our, all of our social media platforms, get on the, um, the brand ambassador course with the veteran homeowners club. And if you're a real estate professional and you learn how to kill it in real estate, Okay, or when in real estate through our mentoring and coaching program. Okay, we have our wire mentors where you're going to talk, we're going to teach you guys about how to structure your business as a real estate professional to get from eight, six to eight figures, and then also how to structure your business to scale. Man, That's this right. has been a really, really good course. Ian, how can they reach you? Okay, so one of the many ways, uh, the best way is my Instagram, which is Jensatron, easy day, J E N S E. T R O N and my Facebook Ian Jensen or my uh, website there. What is it? Jensen. What is it? It's from, never mind. Disregard. B and you can reach me at anthonysocial.com or googleanthony.com or anthony10k.com where we help you win in real estate. Tuesdays and Thursdays on Clubhouse, we'll be giving more information like that so you can have A to B conversations with us. We do that at 9 a.m. 
Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we talk about VA loans and actually how to scale your business. And then also we do other rooms as well. So make sure you follow our Winning Real Estate Facebook group and then hit us up on anthonysocial.com. Yeah, Win right. in real estate and we are out.